Hey everybody, Sean Zinsmeister from ThoughtSpot here. Wanted to give you an introduction and overview of our workforce contingency planning use case uh, in the era of COVID-19. Something we're seeing uh, is a key business initiative coming from a lot of our customers, both in the commercial and public sector. Uh, the spread of COVID-19 has caused a sudden and massive shift in the workforce. Uh, you know, there a lot of businesses and teams are scrambling to move their operations online and they're inundated with questions uh, that they didn't plan on. You know, things like how close are employees to the virus hotspots, what types of teams are affected the most, which role and are which roles are business and mission critical, which teams can be productive from home, um, are those teams supported? Do we, they have the right IT access? Can we, how do we keep them connected? Um, how do we best support employees with highest risk profiles and on and on. So with ThoughtSpot, we're, tr we're helping to focus on helping customers ask the right questions of their workforce data so that they can develop fact-based contingency plans. So what we've done in this demo is we're going to use a public data set from federal workforce data uh, from OPM combined with the JHU coronavirus data stream to help identify high-risk employee locations and departments relative to the virus outbreak. So for example, you know, I want to understand which states are seeing the highest cumulative growth of cases uh, in the last 14 days. Um, so in this case, what I would do here is I would go here. Uh, we've already created a keyword around COVID-19 cases cumulative. Uh, we want to look at this daily. And look at this by state. And because we're actually interested in narrowing this down to the states that are seeing the highest growth, what we'll do is we'll write an in clause uh, state in COVID-19 cases, state top five last 14 days. Okay, and let's switch to a line chart. Now, if you've been following the news, it's probably no surprise that New York uh, has been one of the hardest hit, most impacted. Um, if we filter this out, view also shows that New Jersey is, looks like it's also on the rise uh, as well. So with this in mind, uh, let's now turn to how this might impact our workforce at a granular level. In this case, we're focused on the federal workforce, which is any non-uniform personnel that is employed by the federal government. So. To start our analysis, let's just start by looking at employees by state. Okay, uh, let's continue to look at New York just because we know that's one of the high impact areas. And in this case, we want to understand what agencies are actually mo could be most impacted um, by what's going on there. And so we'll drill down by agency and we're going to add our at risk age keyword. And then we'll go ahead and we'll sort this. So it looks like the VA and the Army have two of the highest concentration of at-risk employees. Um, let's focus on the VA for a second and this uh, section here. And let's actually drill into this by occupation to get more granular insights. And I can actually just add top 15 um, for a better view. And it looks like you know there's a variety of uh, healthcare and other key uh, areas of work of the workforce that are potentially affected uh, within the VA. Um, so this can help inform our planning. Um, so let's take this again a step further because healthcare workers, in particular, are mission critical heroes right now. Let's better understand what the risk exposure is this time, looking at California. Um, another state that's actually been heavily impacted as well and where I'm speaking to you from today and figure out what adjustments we might need to react to as the virus spreads. Um, so again, let's look at employees. In this case, uh, since we're focused on healthcare workers, let's look at a particular group of healthcare workers like nurses. And so we can say occupation contains a simple string. Now this is going to go through and look at all of the occupation workers in California that contain nurse. We also want to put our at risk age and then California. So fortunately, uh, a majority of our healthcare workers in this particular query are at the non-risky cohort, but let's now drill into 
our high-risk exposure cohort to see and learn more about uh, how we might be able to plan. So let's go ahead and drill in here by agency sub element. And we can actually go ahead with this by descending. And here we can see that the VA, you know, not only cares for some of the highest risk patients, uh, but also has the high number of high risk nurses as well and medical staff. So now that we've identified who is at most risk in the VA, let's now kind of move to solutioning where we can help identify who can fill the void if we have those at-risk employees stop working. So let's start again by looking at employees. In this case, let's look at the uh, in Veterans Affairs in California. Okay, and in this case, we're want to look, instead of looking at the high risk group, let's actually look at the lower age risk group. And so we'll actually look at the 59 and younger. Uh, and let's also look at those who aren't brand new to the agency. So people who have been there between five uh, and nine years and 10 and 14 years. Okay, so this modifies our employee count. And what we can do here is let's now drill into this by work status. Most of the workforce is already full time. Let's see if we can find some seasonal and temp employees in the VA that may be able to help. So we'll actually just go ahead and then drill further here by occupation. And then we can use our top keyword to have a better look. So it looks like there's uh, 300 plus people and a handful of relevant occupations that we could and should get in contact with. Uh, nurses, general health science, medical officers, etc. At this point, new confirmed case growth is expected regardless of location. Uh, new York's contingency plan is already underway, as is California's. Let's actually now try to understand and identify states where there isn't a massive growth yet, so we can be proactive with risk mitigation and contingency planning there. Let's return to our, just looking at our COVID data set. And so we're going to look at COVID 19 cases by state. And look at this in daily. Now, what we want to do here is we want to understand where there are states of probably less than 100 cases in the last. Uh, 14 days. So we're going to look at state in state COVID. And actually, in this case, we're going to look at the total less than 100 in the last 14 days. Let me switch to a line chart. Even a stacked area. You can see that Delaware and Arkansas, two areas with relatively not a ton of cases, but certainly starting to see a trend that goes upwards. And so uh, these might be areas that we may want to be proactive with. So let's start looking at what our contingency plan, how we can inform our contingency plan by understanding Delaware's risk exposure. Um, so Let's look at employees, in this case by in Delaware, by agency, and look at ask risk at risk age. Let's get a better view here. So again, our largest agencies are the Air Force and the VA again. So we can quickly drill into, let's look at the Air Force this time, uh, at, ri at risk groups to inform our planning again by occupation. So let's drill in here by occupation. Let's look at the top 10. These are areas where we may want to start looking at contingency planning for uh, how we might be able to fill in some of these gaps that should any of these people uh, not be able to pre perform their job. Finally, uh, the other thing we talked about is, you know, business continuity and how do we keep a workforce connected. And in order to work from home and telework setups to be successful, we need telecommunications roles to make sure the right people have the right IT act to, uh, the right IT access, connectivity, internet stays online, and more. So let's identify agencies in each state 
that actually currently have the fewest resources. Um, so we can make sure that we can maybe focus on that first. So let's look at employees, looking up just telecommunications agency. And instead of looking at the top this time, which we had state first, let's actually look at the bottom 30. Okay, let's switch to our table view here. These agencies need immediate attention as their single-threaded telecommunications uh, work, you know, single degrees of failure. This has been a comprehensive overview. You can see how vital speed to insights can be in understanding where your blind spots are very quickly so you can adapt um, and increase your resiliency um, as well as agility for your workforce management and people operations. Thanks again for your time. If you want to learn more, please visit ThoughtSpot.com or you can find me on LinkedIn. It's Sean Zinsmeister. Um, or you can find me on Twitter at, at @szinsmeister. Thanks again.